This is sort of like a natty cycle, in a way, if that makes sense. What you want to do... You ain't been doing the education So I thought I'd do a video on the top 10 ways to boost your testosterone naturally. And before everyone comments, oh yeah, but the only way to boost your testosterone is by taking testosterone. Yes, I agree. Nothing will ever be as good as boosting your testosterone as taking testosterone itself. But for the guys who want to preserve some HPT axis function, just to produce a little bit more, maybe if you're about borderline middle to a bit under middle and you want to boost your testosterone, about 10 to 15 percent this is the video for you and keep in mind when i say to stimulate the hpt axis i mean really to keep it healthy so if your diet is out of whack your sleep is out of whack and you're not training and your lifestyle factors are you know very stressful then that is the low-hanging fruit that you can immediately make a change to to boost your testosterone this video is for the guys who have done all that and want just a little bit extra in the research about 10 to 15 percent on current levels so if you're hanging out at about you know like a 500 nanograms per deciliter level it's sort of middle of the range it's not super high it's not super low but you want to sort of boost it up maybe to 550, 600, this is the video for you. Starting off with number one, which is zinc. And there is quite a bit of research to show that zinc boosts testosterone as well as your sperm count. In this study, 37 patients between 20 to 40 years old with infertility of more than five years were given zinc sulfate at 660 milligrams daily for around one to two months. And although the dose was dropped to 240 milligrams a day, the group with the lowest testosterone levels had a significant increase in testosterone and its more potent form DHT and their sperm count was also increased. And the group that had already high levels of testosterone at baseline didn't have as much of an increase in testosterone. In fact, there was no significant change there, but they did have an upregulation of DHT, its more potent form. And this is perhaps proof that with zinc, there is a limit to how far you can actually stimulate your natural production. In other words, the biggest benefit was seen for the sort of lower end testosterone group in order to stimulate their HPT axis more, but for the guys who already might have a very high level of natural testosterone, zinc probably isn't going to do that much credence to the idea that the HPT axis is rate limiting in that you cannot stimulate up to like, you know, 1,200 nanograms per deciliter levels constantly. It's really that a high normal level is probably going to be your maximum endogenous or natural limit. In terms of mechanisms for zinc, it is still kind of unclear, but in the entire cholesterol to testosterone pathway, there are a number of key enzymes and zinc is an element that is very, very heavily involved in these processes, as well as the structural enzymes themselves. And having more zinc, they think, in the research may actually lead to an upregulation and a more efficient process from cholesterol to testosterone, meaning essentially more testosterone being produced. In terms of dosing, a sensible start from the research seems to be about 14 to 20 milligrams of zinc per day, and you can titrate based on how your T levels respond. The second T booster is cholesterol. And this is a really powerful molecule because it is cholesterol itself that is the precursor to testosterone. As in cholesterol through a number of processes is turned into testosterone. So having more cholesterol or having an adequate amount of cholesterol allows the body to then convert that molecule into testosterone. And this makes sense, right? Having more cholesterol means that more can be turned into testosterone to a limit. So don't go crazy with this, but it does sort of explain why very low fat diets with no cholesterol at all leads to a significant crash in testosterone levels because the body physically has no cholesterol molecule to turn into testosterone. Some great sources of cholesterol to include in your diet without going crazy because there, there is sort of a health aspect to this as well as you don't want to go crazy with cholesterol for obviously cardiovascular reasons, but some good cholesterol sources to include in your diet as they start to see if it shifts your testosterone in any significant way would be things like egg yolks, number one, cheese, organ meat, sardines, fatty fish, and some yogurts. However, like I said, there is a health concern here as well. You don't wanna be pushing your cholesterol uh, crazy and certainly not going like our friend, the liver king and having like 50 eggs a day. Probably not very smart for cardiovascular health. But if you're not incorporating a few eggs a day, for example, into your diet, could be a good place to start to boost your natural testosterone production. Number three is fenugreek. Now we're getting into the more supplementation side of things. And fenugreek seems to have a promising effect on free and total testosterone in almost all the research. And it's one of the strongest supplements that's been studied. And one of my favorites for boosting testosterone in borderline patients who might have that mid-level of testosterone. 600 milligrams daily for 12 weeks 
boosted both total and free T significantly. And this is backed up by virtually all studies that have found various doses of fenugreek boost testosterone. The mechanism seems to be that fenugreek may inhibit the two enzymes responsible for turning testosterone into estrogen and DHT. So by inhibiting those two 5-alpha reductase, which turns it into DHT, and aromatase, which turns testosterone into estrogen, by inhibiting those two enzymes, you're actually getting more testosterone available to the body. In simple terms, because they're not going through those cascade pathways, you're basically getting more testosterone floating around your body in the blood, available to exert its effects like muscle growth, et cetera, et cetera. In terms of dosing, it seems to be about 500 to 1,000 milligrams per day for about six to 12 weeks. That would be a good start for number three, which is fenugreek. Okay, number four is tribulus. And tribulus is another sort of supplement that can increase both total and free testosterone. Although the argument is less strong for tribulus than it is for fenugreek, there is some research to show that it does still boost testosterone. Three months of treatment with 750 milligrams daily of tribulus, total T was significantly higher in the tribulus group. And there also seems to be some mechanism and some evidence that tribulus is good for erectile dysfunction as well, potentially involving a relaxation of penile smooth muscle tissue, which would be really good for the guys who both have low testosterone but also can't get it up and the dosing around 500 milligrams to a thousand milligrams per day seems to be a good place to start although fenugreek would be the number one tribulus being sort of a second tier of uh, testosterone booster number five is boron now this is a very interesting mechanism because it doesn't affect the hpt axis directly it's actually affecting shbg now testosterone binds to two proteins in the body shbg very strongly about a 70 percent binding affinity to shbg and about a 20 to 30 percent binding affinity to albumin which is the other protein which is bound to, which is a lot weaker. But free testosterone is really the only form of testosterone available to get into the cells and exert its effect. Number one, of course, being muscle growth in terms of anabolic effects. But this supplement is very, very good for the guys who have a very high level of total testosterone, but an annoyingly low level of free testosterone, i.e. all of their testosterone is bound up in these proteins, like guys who have a very high SHBG level. 10 milligrams a day of boron in healthy men found a significant increase in free testosterone. Again, sort of adding to this idea that it frees up your total testosterone from SHBG. And this was a significant increase from 11.8 all the way up to 15.2 picograms per milliliter, which is huge. That's a 30% increase in uh, free testosterone. And at the same time in this study, total testosterone didn't really change. Again, showing that it's not affecting the HPT axis directly, but it's sort of modulating how much the body is going to release into the bloodstream to be able to then exert its anabolic effects in muscle cells. So in a way, this is a bit of an indirect supplement, not affecting the cholesterol to testosterone pathway directly, but like I said, the SHBG protein and allowing free testosterone to rise significantly. So for the guys who have that very high level of total testosterone, but a super high SHBG, this supplement might be good for you. And the research shows that about 10 milligrams a day would be a good starting point. Number six has a lot of strong research behind it. That is ashwagandha with the evidence showing that it boosts free T and total testosterone very significantly. And interestingly, in most studies showing a significant increase in both muscle mass and strength. And the great thing about ashwagandha in the studies is that it does bring people up from that sort of middle of the road testosterone level up to a higher level, which is again quite encouraging for the guys who just wanna boost their T up about 10, 15% without affecting their endogenous production significantly. The mechanism is a bit unclear, but it seems to be around oxidative stress. So ashwagandha by decreasing oxidative stress levels allows the body to be in a position to ramp up endogenous production because the stresses on the enzymes and the pathway isn't as significant. And in a way, the HPT axis is a lot more happy or healthy, whatever you want. For dosing, about 250 to 600 milligrams a day seems a good starting point in the research. And it also seems to subjectively improve in some people's sleep which actually leads to number seven, which is a non-supplemental way to boost testosterone, but is one of the most powerful. And you know what I'm gonna say? Number seven is sleep. Sleep is incredibly anabolic. With most of our testosterone released in a diurnal rhythm between 6 to 8 a.m., where our peak is for men, any major disruptions to this can lead to a significant decrease in testosterone. In fact, even just one week of sleep deprivation from about eight hours down to five hours, so a loss of about, yeah, two to three hours in the research, decreased testosterone levels by 10 to 15%, which is huge. And it stands to reason, like I said at the beginning of this video, this would be a low hanging fruit. If you're looking at these supplements, but you're only sleeping five hours a night, bump it up if you can, 
to eight hours and see if that improves your testosterone levels because it's such a low hanging fruit that you can immediately bring it into your lifestyle to fix up your sleep in order to boost your T levels. And I've seen a lot of guys thinking about TRT when they have sort of borderline low levels and then they come to me and they're like, you know, I'm sleeping four to five hours a night um, and I'm like, well, let's fix that first, see what happens and then make your decision. Don't rush into it if you've got these low hanging fruit that can immediately boost your testosterone um, and bring your HPT axis into a more healthy state, then start looking at TRT if you've done all these things and it's still not working. Number eight is Tonkat Ali. And it seems to affect cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and decrease stress on the HPT axis. And so indirectly boosting testosterone that way because cortisol and testosterone seem to have an inverse relationship with each other. So with Tonkat decreasing cortisol, the body is more happy to produce testosterone. 600 milligrams of Tonkat found a significant increase in both free and total testosterone without any changes in LH and FSH. Again, showing the idea that it doesn't directly affect the HPT axis, but is more working on the stress hormone cortisol to boost testosterone that way. In fact, other studies have shown up to a 16% decrease in cortisol and a 37% increase in testosterone, which is absolutely enormous. And the dosing anywhere from 300 milligrams to 600 milligrams a day seems to be a pretty good and sensible place to start for Tonkat. Number nine is, <laughs> Fedoja agrestis. Now, I know about this because I, I made a video, my most controversial video ever. Um, I know about Fedoja. God, I, that word is burnt into my, my brain now. However, I've learned a lot <laughs> since I made that video. And Fedoja actually does show some promise if cycled to boost testosterone. Improvements in testosterone were significant when taking Fedoja. And most interestingly, it seems to be one of the only supplements on this top 10 list that I'm doing here that actually directly affects the HPT axis. With the studies, it's shown a significant increase in luteinizing hormone. It may actually be directly acting on the hypothalamus or pituitary gland directly to increase luteinizing hormone. All the other supplements here don't touch the HPT axis, but Fedoja seems to be the only one that boosts it. Almost like, dare I say, almost like uh, Clomid, like a serum in a way to boost luteinizing hormone, therefore increase testosterone directly. And cycling a low dose of around 300 milligrams to 1000 milligrams per day at no more than sort of six to 12 weeks seems to be relatively safe without the cytotoxic effects that got me in trouble in my first video, but may actually have a positive benefit for your testosterone levels as well. And finally, number 10 is turkesterone, another sort of controversial supplement, but there is some evidence that ectosteroids like turkesterone directly boost testosterone because their structure is so similar to testosterone. So they may bind to the androgen receptor without actually telling the body that testosterone is in the body. You see, when you inject testosterone, the body and your brain is having exogenous testosterone bind to the androgen receptor and tell the, the hypothalamus and the pituitary to shut down production because you have enough testosterone. That negative feedback doesn't seem to be an issue with turkesterone because the molecule is similar, but it seems to be different enough such that it's not exerting any significant negative feedback to the body. So endogenous testosterone is high, but you also get some androgen receptor binding from turkesterone itself. In fact, studies have shown that ectosteroids showed a strong hypertrophic effect in rats that even outweigh D-Bol and Psalms, which now to outweigh D-Bol and Psalms, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that's correct, but it is interesting how it can increase muscle hypertrophy in rats. Whether it translates to humans is a bit, yeah, it's not exactly clear, but it could be a potentially promising supplement if you want to increase muscle hypertrophy slightly. The best benefit, of course, like I said, it doesn't shut down natural testosterone production. About 500 to 1000 milligrams a day seems a sensible place to start for an ectosteroid like turkesterone and seems to be in line with the research. And that's it guys. In conclusion, the top 10, zinc, cholesterol, fenugreek, tribulus. Boron, ashwagandha, sleep, eight hours. Tonkat Ali, Fedoja Agrestis, and Turkestrone. This is the top 10 guys. This is sort of like a natty cycle in a way, if that makes it. What you wanna do is use some of these supplements, see if it has an effect on your testosterone levels. I wouldn't go crazy and use all 10 at once. I'd pick maybe one or two, see if it has an effect on your testosterone levels. It may not, or it may, in which case you know that you can boost it about 10 to 15%. 
I think it's a really good idea, like I've been saying throughout this video, for the guys who are sitting at a borderline testosterone level, want to boost it, that 10 to 15%, could be a good way to boost it without shutting your HPT access down and committing to a lifelong testosterone replacement therapy protocol. This could be a really awesome option. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope I've helped you. Fitness Science, signing out.